What's going on, everybody? This is Drew here. I want to welcome you all to a brand new episode of Phoenix Down. This is Phoenix Down 128.3. And we are continuing our playthrough of Greedfall. Today I have with me Matt. Hello. And yeah, so full disclosure. I feel like we played a lot of this game, but we didn't make much progress. Yeah, I guess it depends how you look at it. I feel like we made a lot of progress, but not a lot happened. Yeah, not a lot happened. Um, I feel like we are definitely in the game now. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm in this world. I know what I'm trying to do. Do but you? But it takes a long time to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's. I, I think that's the best way to describe it. Because I feel like I just worked on one quest line. So it feels like there's two main story quest lines. And I feel like I've just focused on one of them. And I'm thinking... Yeah, screw Constantine. Well, yeah. So we got Constantine who's sick. And, I, you know, I dealt with the whole coup. Kurt's dead. Um, I saved the town of, of Hikmet. And... um I let the, the, the town with all the religious people be taken over. San Mateus. San Mateus. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, what do I do next? Well, I, I like that town because it's like St. Matt. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's my town. Yeah, well, there I you go. let them go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah, I was like, okay, well. Uh, so I do have the option to go check back in with Constantine and tell him about, you know, the coup. Essentially, now I haven't done that, so I um I I went ahead and started with furthering the um the quest line for you know curing the Malachor, which has yeah, two seems quest to be the lines. most important thing around, right? Yeah, because now we now we've got Constantine with it, and so I'm like, all right, well let's go find it. So yeah, this time it's personal, it's family. I started with the 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 one where we get Afra. Um, what's what, what's her group called? The Bridge Alliance. Yeah, the Bridge Alliance. Yeah, the Bridge Alliance. So I started that one. I got her, and then it just kept going. I was like, all right, well. I've still got that one quest about the, the, the diabolical cult or the demonic cult or whatever. Yeah. Haven't touched that one whatsoever. That one had that weird, tough... I don't know. Maybe it wasn't tough. I had no idea what to do where you have to light up all those candles in the right order. I haven't done that, so I don't know. Ah. Uh, well, good luck. <laughs> Great. The, good luck figuring out the order. The The... So you said, so you, you mentioned something that makes me want to talk about this because I feel like either when I run into a fight, I either have the easiest time in the world or the hardest time in the world. I can't figure out the difficulty spikes in these games. <laughs> like, because I feel like, you know, I upgraded my stuff. I th I th here's my problem. And I think it's because I spec my character differently. So I started experimenting a little bit, like close to the end of this play session. I spec my character to be kind of like a, a rogue who uses pistols or uses guns. Yeah. Also, I spec her to uh, utilize traps. So, basically you're you're your trickster rogue kind of character um now i'm running into i have no ammo so yeah. my my highest powered attacks are very limited and i save my ammo for harder fights but then i'm always out well you go to a vendor he has maybe 5 ammo max well i can spend that in a single fight you can craft ammo, but well, you got to have your science to at least level two to do that. I don't have any points in science. What about charisma? 
my charisma is completely maxed out. I was going to say, maybe it doesn't matter if you can't buy all that much, but that does reduce the, the price at vendors, right? It does, but I, I, I have plenty of money. Yeah. That's the problem. It's like, I have plenty of money. It's just that the vendors don't have a lot of what I need. So I think the next best thing would be to craft my own. But now I don't have science to actually craft stuff. And I, I, I guess I'll just have to wait until I level up probably three times before I get those attribute points. Yeah, they are slow in coming, that's for sure. That's the problem. Like, I'm getting plenty of skill points, but not actual like attribute points. Yeah, and then there's talent points. I guess talent is where the charisma is. Yeah, talent talent is what I'm talking about. So talent yeah. is where, you know, your charisma, your science, your, um, uh, I guess, craftsmanship, crafting. Um, and I, I feel yeah. like if I could, if I could craft my own ammo, I guarantee you I've got so much, I don't know what it requires to craft ammo, but I guarantee you I've got enough to make like 99 bullets. Yeah. But you probably only need level one, right? No, it requires level two. Oh, really? Yes. Jeez, I feel like I got everything with level one just because I could fill in all those uh, spaces on the equipment and weapons. Yeah. And, you know, I've had a few other little things where just level one craftsmanship has been so valuable. I I feel like I've I've had so many instances where level one science would be helpful as well. But you get so few talent points, and I'm like, I don't even want to waste one point on yeah. science. If I can buy my way around it, right? Like, there's one part where I just got to where you need to have an alchemical mix to blow up some nests. Uh -huh. I'm like, I could make them very easily if I had science, but I refuse to put my point there because I desperately need it for other things so i'm like look i will just buy them in fact i think i already had some but i was like if i didn't i would just buy them and save that point it's it's weird how how precious those points are <laughs> indeed it's it's crazy like every every three levels you get one point I, f I fear that i'll be at the end of this game by the time i have enough to actually craft my ammo i feel like if i was able to craft my ammo <laughs> I would be unstoppable. So, what kind of uh, a gun are you using? Do you have a good one? I have a gun that has three barrels, so I can pop off three shots in succession. Oh, so, nice. I, so I can go bam, bam, bam like that. And like, I have pumped up my my damage and stagger so much with firearms that if I shoot one person with it, it knocks them down. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I upgraded Vasco with a nice, a nice pistol and a nice dagger actually. So he's he's been a good damage dealer for me lately. Afra's pretty good with guns. That's what she uses, and I've been using her in my party. Hmm. Um, the the issue. So I ran into that issue where okay, I don't have the ammo. I was like, well, let me try experimenting with other things. So I, I, I've went down the path of the rogue, if you want to call it that, and have like, you know, I can throw grenades now, or I can lay down traps, which those work pretty well. Now, I was thinking, let me look at my hot bar, my hot key, because I never, I never actually look at it, and. Th you can, you know, register. It's not just a grenade. There's like shrapnel grenades, which are really good on breaking armor. But then there's also oh, like, yeah, nice. there's like stasis grenades and, um, poison grenades and all these different types of grenades. I'm like, Oh wow. I've got all these grenades. I just picked up, you know? So I started using those on top of that, uh, because the rogue likes to use uh blade coating now I can coat my blade with stuff. So I coat my blade with poison. That's been helping me out a lot because you know what? Poison goes behind armor like magic does a little bit. 
do you have to hit first? Like, do you have to... I, I, I guess... I guess anything... Does it, does it do damage even if they have armor? Yes. Okay. So you hit them... So if I coat my blade with poison and I slash a guy, he'll be poisoned for a certain amount of time. Now... You can, depending on your skill points, you can make the poison last longer. You can make the coating last longer because, like, to start off, I think coating, you can only have, like, three hits will do a, an elemental attack. But now I've got it to where, like, I can do five hits before I have to put another coat on. Um, and that's been helping me out a lot. Stasis grenades are actually pretty good. So I had to use them for that mini boss fight with the healer woman because you know whenever she sicked those dogs on us or whatever yeah they were just wrecking me so i was like i got this stasis grenade let me just throw that out there oh yeah no that works great you can like freeze dudes in their tracks i haven't tried that but i've heavily upgraded the stasis ability no you have a stasis magic ability yeah i have a stasis magic ability that works really well on anything that's not a boss and I've just about maxed. I've actually got it now, so it's a wave. Although I've never actually noticed that it it will hit multiple enemies, but it's supposed to hit multiple enemies. Gotcha. And I've got it fully maxed, so it lasts longer. It increases their susceptibility uh, as soon as they're out of stasis. So yeah, it's 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 good for helping with damage, but it's much better just for sidelining a guy for a while. Yeah. So I was able. I found my first legendary weapon. Uh, what what color are the legendaries? Like an orange color or a gold color. Mm. Um, I can't use it because it requires two strength, and um, nobody in my party can use it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's like a legendary scythe. Oh, nice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, 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 I'm going to try and experiment more with, like, the coatings and the grenades and stuff like that. But I, I fear that because I can't craft that stuff, I'll eventually run out. Yeah. And I, I guess I could run the gamut of buying them from vendors. But I, I guess vendors, what, restock after a day? So I guess I could just buy run back to the house sleep sleep come back do it again but i just I, I haven't bothered with that now i'm in a i'm in the middle of a dungeon and i have no ammo no traps mm. and just a handful of grenades and and blade coatings that i can use but, yeah i wanted to do the same thing because when i'm in these battles my uh my magic meter depletes in like 2 seconds and then I'm like, all right, I can just wait for an hour for it to refill, or I'm just running through magic potions, but then I'm out, and I can't really just buy them, and I'd like to make them, but then I need science again. Hmm. So yeah. I had to buy bigger ones that were more expensive, but now I don't have that many of them, so... So on your skill tree, did you touch into any of the other, like, I guess... Archetypes? Uh, not really. I just went down the the two paths: the one for like the the ma mace maces, and the other one for magic. Okay. And then there's a a point where the two of those converge. Yeah. Which is where the stasis is. So I I upgraded the stasis all the way. That's that's what I'm doing, but with the the rogue stuff. So yeah. one part is all about firearms, the other part's about traps and grenades and stuff like that. I guess I'm just going to go full rogue. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't found I, I should look up whether there's a really good mace because I'm still like I don't have I don't have the, any skill in firearms. Um the magic is good, but I don't feel like there are that many. It's not like there are lots of spells to cast. So it's just a projectile that you're spamming. Mm -hmm. um, and then my mace is pretty basic. So while I have the capacity for a great mace, I don't actually have any. So I should try to find one. So that yeah. will help balance it. I 
I feel like the last few hours of play, I've been less dominant um, because I've been fighting a lot more enemies with armor, and the magic is is good on some of them, but some of them are more or less immune to magic, and so I have to get in there and break the armor. And I've been relying a lot more on that mace, and then realizing it's it's maybe not as good as those who are susceptible to magic are 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 dead in seconds, but. This boss that I've died at a bunch of times now is uh, not susceptible to much. Which is weird, because I don't even think it's a story-based boss. I'm just doing the, the suffering for Constantine. And I'm just doing a very basic thing I, where I need to blow up three of these nests. I've blown up two of them. And then just before I get to the third one, there's a huge boss. It's It's kind of a cool scene because I like came into this clearing where a bunch of I think they're Bridge Alliance members are are themselves fighting a boss. <laughs> and so as soon as you get in there then everybody starts attacking you. Um but this guy's destroying me. He's tough. It's not even it's way harder than the uh I don't know what you call them, the Nadigs, the ones that have the tentacle face and spew the poison. I find them not to be terribly difficult so far, but this is one of the big ones that's like a like an ent, like half tree. Okay. Um, and he's just wrecking me. He's got a move that will kill me in one hit, no matter how, even if I'm full life, where he charges you kind of head first. Um, almost every time I've died, it's been because of that. Hmm. So there is a legendary gun. It's called the... Asili Blunderbuss. Um, I don't know how you get it. I'm going to look it up. That may be my yeah. next quest after I get out of this dungeon okay. I'm in. Yeah, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I saw. I had started a quest at one point to try and find some legendary weapons, but uh, I think I got sidetracked. Let's see here. I'm looking for it here. There it is. This gun can be acquired during the Dr. Asili's Experiments quest, which is part of the In the Name of Science quest line in Hikmet. While the doc while in the doctor's office, look for a chest in one of the corners, and the blunderbuss will be inside of it. Dr. Asili's Experiments. I mean, I need to Doesn't look. Doesn't sound that. too hard to find. No, I just got to find that quest. How do I get that quest? I'm going to copy that and look for that. Sorry, this is great radio. <laughs> so I started the quest to investigate the laboratory. I have Afro and Sora with me sneaking in the caves over past the guards. Yeah, well. I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to the story. Um, the Afro has like, um, obviously they've been studying the natives and, you know, figured out that there is a healer amongst the natives that apparently can make a cure all panacea. So I'm surprised I didn't know you could get to that quest line without having done the earlier ones, like the demonical cult and face to face with the demon. Mm -mm. Haven't done any of that. Uh, this game is so weird in the way it it's just twists. completely open. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of wild if we're being honest, but yeah, yeah. There's literally a main line of quests that you don't have to do some of them, or maybe just don't discover them. So, I mean, you must, they must be on your list somewhere, right? You said the demonical cult was, yeah. you haven't done it yet. I haven't done it yet. I wonder if you can actually beat this game without actually doing those, that quest line and you get a different ending. Yeah. I'm wondering now if, if there's the big decision at the end is just whether Constantine lives or not. Cause so much of this seems to be tied to that. And it feels like you can do, the one main quest line without ever touching the other one. And 
and then you know how bad does the main quest get if you haven't tried to take care of his suffering I don't know I feel like he's alive and well until I go back to him <laughs> So that's why, that's why I haven't I haven't checked in on him. I Schrodinger's cousin. He's I neither alive nor dead as long as you don't talk to him. As long as he's as long as you don't go see him, he's fine. Because <laughs> last time I went and saw him, a coup happened, and I lost a party member. <laughs> yeah, maybe hey, maybe that's the twist. We're just bad luck for him. Mm-hmm, maybe. But yeah, um, so we have to go deeper into the woods to see if we can find this this tribe that has this healer. Um, I was thinking they were going to be hostile to me, but I think I think because I spared the ones that had them kidnapped, had them captive, I think yeah. they, they, they allowed me just to walk into town. Do you have Ciora as well? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm keeping her with me. Um... In fact, I tried something else. So, um, make it into town. Uh, the the healer is is gone off somewhere. I'm like, okay, well, can somebody tell me where she is? And they're like, we don't trust you to tell you. <laughs> okay, so I had to go around town and and do some quests for people. One of the quests was repairing these bells because they have like a hunt that they do, and they use the bells to keep away the monsters. Yeah, and I was like, "All right." So I went to the first bell, and it says, "Oh, you don't have enough craftsmanship to fix this bell." Okay, I, short lived. I don't. I don't know how to fix this bell. Then, so I went back to town and found another person to talk to. I helped them out. Um, did you uh, find the the gatherer, Padir? I did. Who was actually blind and didn't bother to tell anybody. Yeah, I did not rat him out. Um, and then I helped the kind of like the second in command there because he he had lost like a medallion or something. Was it a weapon? I thought it was his weapon, but Padir the blind gatherer had lost his medallion down by the river somewhere. Okay, yeah. But I, apparently, just doing two is enough. Uh so I talked to the guy and he told me where she was, which was straight ahead. <laughs> yeah. I get annoyed by the bells one again. Maybe I wasn't, I just wasn't paying attention enough. I went to all the bells and then nothing happened. You fixed them? Well, what I did is I went and like when you interact with it, it says, here's what's wrong with the bell. It's twisted or the ends aren't connecting or, or whatever's wrong with the individual bells. So I went and did that for every one. I didn't realize you had to interact a second time to actually repair. So I'm running through this whole forest in a circle just to find out that I need to run the whole circle again because I never actually repaired anything. All I did was identify the problems with every set of bells. Oh man, this game. So that, that, that kind of thing happened with me a little bit later on. Um... Uh, sometimes I just wish this game would just tell me what to click on. Yeah. I mean, I blamed myself because in retrospect, when I had done my entire loop, I realized that every bell still had the orange star on it, meaning it's your quest. You haven't done it. Um, and then as soon as you actually repair it, it goes away and you, you're done with that section. But I thought interacting with it and having them describe what was wrong with it was all I had to do, but uh, I only did half. <laughs> so the second in command tells us where she is. We go straight ahead. She's at this big tree sleeping amongst these beasts. Kind of cool looking though. They're like land sharks. Yeah. And, um, She, um, you know, obviously is very reluctant to talk to us. Now, I had Afra at my party. Afra is not the very, very tactful person when it comes to talking to people, apparently. 
because uh, when I talked to her, um, I was like, hey, we heard that you can make a cure-all. We were hoping that you could possibly help us with the Malachor. And she's, you know, judging us the whole time. Um, she even talks to Ciara and is like, why are you with these people? And we're trying to reason with her. She has nothing. She don't, she don't want anything to do with it. And yeah. then Afra interjects and is like, look, you need to give us this. And she's just like, uh, no. And then <laughs> runs away and six those freaking beasts on us. Well, I promptly die from them. And I'm like, okay, maybe I don't need to have Afra in my party. <laughs> so I loaded back up, went to camp, changed it out. And, uh, had Vasco in my party. Did the whole cutscene again. Everything played out the exact same with the exception of Afra didn't interject. Vasco just kind of stood there silently. <laughs> and the same thing happened. She's and like, she still nope. attacks. Yeah, still attacks. I'm like, screw you guys. All right. Well, I died again. That's when I started having to experiment. All right, well, let me try blade coating and stuff like that. And I was like, I, I kind of like Afra because she's got that gun that does pretty good damage. So I um, switched back to her. And was able to beat the beasts. She runs off. So we chase after her. And we come up to this door. That has been intertwined with a bunch of. Vines. And I'm like yeah, okay. All, all I could think of when I saw that was. Um, the Patrick Rothfuss. Fantasy series. Because the third book. Is called the door of stone. And I'm like there it is. There's the door of stone. And the door of stone. Well. The game doesn't tell me what to do here. It just says search for a way in. And I'm like, okay. Well, I completely ignored the, the friggin' thing right there in front of the door. Yeah, the little pedestal. I ran past it, went back to town, talked to everybody, <laughs> ran back. I was like, what the hell am I missing? Yeah. I finally had to search for it. Apparently, a lot of people had this issue because there's nothing there to to signify that you can interact with that thing. Yeah. And I was just like, come on, man. And so, yeah, I was able to figure it out. So we need to put, um, some seeds as an offering to open the door. Got it. So we go back to town and search her quarters and we see the flower. Oh, there's the flower. I've seen some of those. Go through the woods, find the flower, get the seeds, go back, open the door. Cool. And now we're in a dungeon. So I started traversing through this dungeon. Tried to be sneaky as best I could. Um, those bat things suck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because they can poison you. And I couldn't tell you how many times I killed all the bats and was still poisoned and then died. I don't know if I have antidotes or something like that in my inventory. Maybe I need to start checking that stuff. Yeah, I've used them a couple of times. I, it's one of the reasons I like the uh, the distanced attacks. Because you can, I feel like, avoid most... Okay. A little technical difficulties there, but hopefully we can splice this up. Um, yeah, uh, we were talking about going into the dungeon. Is that where you are now? Is in the caves? Yeah, I'm in the caves right now. Um, I'm about halfway. I got that legendary scythe there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've been trying to be sneaky because those bats suck. Getting poisoned. But um. That's pretty much it. I think I've I've got my new goal once I get out of this dungeon. I'm going to try and go get that gun. Yeah. Because I, I hate to say this, but I'm still using kind of the starter weapon. Yeah, that's kind of where I am with my mace. I, I've, I, I did upgrade it once, but I think only from like a green mace to a blue level mace. So I don't have anything, you know, nothing legendary, nothing special. No purple, no gold, no anything like that. So I definitely could could go for a damage increase with my melee yeah, weapon. 
I definitely could. <laughs> I, just I also had, you know, just FYI, I had a little bit of trouble with the boss at the end of this section. Oh, good. Because, again, there's so much armor, like, the way my character is, the bats go down, like, instantaneously, like, I can kill f- ten bats in three seconds, but this boss, because it had so much armor, was a real pain for me. Oh, could your magic, like, go past it? It does, but I feel like these bosses, I don't know if it's because they're magical to start with, they don't take much damage from my magic. I literally feel like I would have to hit them 500 times to kill them with my magic. Okay. And I don't even have enough magic potions to get 500 shots out. So I have to go in with my mace, um, which does a lot more damage on these bosses than the magic does even, you know, even when the magic's going behind the armor, through the armor. Can Can you stagger this boss? This is the one where I'm using my um, my stasis, and okay. it only lasts for like a second, one second maybe. Oof. Whereas okay. the main enemies are are they're stasis for a little while. It's nice. Uh, these bosses don't don't pause for long. That's for sure. I fear I need to go get some ammo then. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, we do have an email, but I don't think I can read it just yet. Um, it comes from Chad and it's literally titled Greedfall finale slash (laughs) ending. And I'm like, I don't even know if I want to even read that yet. So we'll save that for the end. Yeah. Um, which hopefully is coming up soon. So, uh, one thing I did want to talk about was, uh, the future of Phoenix Down. Um, we've talked about it a little bit, but um, obviously I don't want to give up the show um, when my child comes. Um, but my game time will be significantly slashed. Um, and that's okay. Um, I'm going to try and squeeze in as much game time as I can. Um, obviously my daughter is going to come first, Yeah. but, uh, I mean, what, what may end up happening is instead of weekly episodes where we go through, you know, step by step, chapter by chapter, that kind of thing, we may have like a, a monthly show where we just sit down and have like a big spoiler cast. Like this is what we thought about this game while yeah. we played it, you know, and we can talk about instances that we liked and stuff like that. And I mean, if that's, if that's okay with you, Matt, I mean, obviously I haven't, I haven't actually just asked you that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, what you're saying makes sense, right? I mean, you, your daughter definitely comes first and it's a, it's, it's a whole new chapter of life. So, yeah. you know, if, if there's a way we can continue it, I'm, I'm really excited to, um, yeah. if, if we can't, then I'll, I'll just text you a lot more about these games, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's totally fine. It's one of those things of like, I'm not going to stop playing video games, but I am going to have to, they're going to take a back seat, most certainly. Yeah. Um, the, um, Especially yeah, for the first while while you're figuring it out, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first year is going to be, we, we've been taking classes, um, and it's kind of come to the conclusion that like, you know, month zero to three is a normal. And then month four to five is completely different. And then, you know, it's like the, the different milestones, you know, it, you have to change up everything. Yeah. So we're still trying to figure everything out. We're planning as best as we can. Um, but I mean, we're, you know, obviously we're really excited. Um, it, I think it's uh, it's going to be a crazy time, and I'm all for it. So the uh, but yeah, the as far as the podcast itself goes, I think we're going to um, we're going to 
probably take a step back from weekly episodes. Um, the next game, I think, I think we're both down for is the man who erased his name, the yep. the Yakuza, because I have infinite wealth literally sitting right here. I'm looking at it, and I have not even opened it, and that is bothering the hell out of me because <laughs> <laughs> I I totally want to get into that game, but I want to do. I think it would be good to have like a a. a a smaller game. From what I understand, man, the man who raced his name is only like 12 hours max. So that's a, that's a very short Yakuza game. Yeah. It's but like um, just a, it's just an appetizer. Exactly. So I think that would be perfect. I mean, obviously we're going to get through Greedfall and we are, we're getting there. Um, yeah. The, this I'm, game is a long burn. <laughs> I'm ready for this game to start wrapping it up though, because in the early days you know, the first day I played this game, I wasn't that excited about it. I feel mm-hmm. like I had played that first section a few times and, you know, just a little bit overwhelmed. But then for the next, like, 20 hours, I loved this game. And I, I spent a lot of time doing side missions. And those were very clear to me because I'm like, all right, I'm 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 better understanding and gaining the trust of my companions and each quest line was so tied to a character that it had a very unique goal, sense of style, sense of purpose. But then, being back into the main quest, everything's felt a little bit muddier. It's not quite as crystal clear as the companion quests are. Those are right. those are kind of linear. Those are very clear. Like you, you, you never mix them up because they're totally different characters. Um, and you know, I would say reasonably well-defined characters. Uh, but but this last session, I, I've just been kind of back and forth. I, I haven't really been totally clear what mission I've been doing, and a lot of the activities have been, you know, sometimes somewhat abst- abstracted from the end goal. So I'm ready for some of these threads to start tying together and start pointing toward the end. Yeah. I think we're going to get there. I mean, I, 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 what I think is going to end up happening is I'm going to hit like a, I'm going to hit like a stop gap with this quest line that I'm doing. And then they'll be like, okay, you need to go do the other quest line now. Yeah. I get the feeling that's what's going to happen. I could be wrong. It seems like this game's had threw a few surprises at me as far as like, oh, well, your character, your, one of your main party members is now dead. And I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. So who knows? Maybe this game diverges a little bit more than what we think. Yeah, and I'm also still pretty blown away that there are two or three main quest missions that you haven't haven't even done yet. I thought they were prerequisites. No. No, I'm, I'm just going just... down this one. I'm going to see how far I can go with it. Yeah, when will they throw a wall in front of me? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We'll see, though. Um... If you would like to send an email, though, it's uh, drew at ztgd.com. Uh, you can also tweet to us. I am at DML Fury. Matt is at REMGS. And the podcast itself is at ZTGD Phoenix Down. Um, eh, decently long episode. That's fine. I thought it was going to be like 10 minutes of us talking about <laughs> what we did. But uh, I, at least we, we got into the strategy a little bit because I feel like I feel like I haven't explored this game enough. Yeah. Especially when it comes to doing stuff in combat. Yeah, I, I was actually going to say that. I, I, depending on where you were with wanting to wrap this up versus wanting to continue, if, if, if we pivoted now and made like a beeline for the end of this game, I would feel like there are a lot of things left unfinished. Yes. Even that I, that I want to do. Like, I want to get some of that legendary... Uh, equipment and, and weapons. I, I want to do some of these side missions. I want to finish off some of the character quests. Um, but also, I think the story would make more sense if I ignored all that stuff and just did the main story. So I, I, I could almost go either way with this game. Yeah. But there's a lot to explore. Like, like I had looked up where some of those... Uh, you know the legendary weapons are, and and it one the one I was looking at was way out in the middle of nowhere, and I was gonna have to go on it basically my own quest just to get that one weapon, 
which, you know, maybe would f make it feel a lot more rewarding, especially if I could spec my character to use it. Exactly. So I, I think my character can use that gun, so as, as soon as I get out of this dungeon, that's where I'm going. I'm going to go try and get that gun. Yeah, hopefully you can get through this next boss without it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that, that's another problem. I, I have think no problem leaving it. The fight. I don't remember exactly how it triggers, but I think you'll be locked into it. Well, I've got to save about halfway through that dungeon. If I need to leave it to go get some ammo, by God, I will. Yeah. And I will, I will, I will go and buy five, and then go sleep, and then go buy five more if I need to. <laughs> uh, I, that'd, be, that'd be the 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 clearest example of grinding in this, basically. That, that that's it. That's it. I just, mm. Yeah. I, I put too many points into the wrong thing. I try because I because every game where you have a charisma thing, I I always try to go for that because I want to see all the dialogue options. Yeah, you know. And so I've I've got my charisma maxed out. I don't think I can fail a charisma check anymore. Yeah, but I also feel like that was really important in the first like four hours of the game, and not so much since. Yeah, it seems like it. I, I, I like, have been able to talk my way out of a few things, I think. Yeah. But I feel like later in the game, you end up with more options and more ways to approach it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I, I did the same thing. I went super high charisma, and, and I've, I've leaned on that whenever I could. Well, that's... That's just the way we play them. So. Yep. We got some charismatic... Uh, <laughs> I wanted to say pirates because of his hat, but... Le Leggets, I guess? <laughs> Charismatic leggets. I uh, the the helmet I'm wearing. I look like a straight up just a soldier. Oh yeah, I put yeah. that on Vasco, so he looks he looks kind of goofy in the helmet. Actually, <laughs> yep, that's uh, yeah. I just look like I'm ready. I'm I'm in a brigade. Yeah. So speaking of, I actually got a tattoo in the game because, um, the 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 last thing I did, and you know, I don't, I don't want to take up too much more time but i no go I did, for it i did vasco's next quest if you remember the the last one that i had done with him he had kind of met up with his brother and, and basically said yeah i don't want that life <laughs> that's that life's not for me i'm a not through and through and uh you know they can keep it basically so the next the next leg of that quest is basically going back to um going back to the Lady Mirage, she's the the lady that is sitting by the docks that you, you interact with a, a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. So she's sitting there right by the tra I, I I see her a lot because I travel to that point occasionally, and she's like right by the travel point. Uh, but basically, you go back to her and and say, you know, I I had a moment of mental weakness, but. I'm, I want to recommit myself to the knot. I am a knot. I'm, I'll always be a knot. That's who I am. And she's like, all right, well, you, you need to prove your loyalty. There's a shipwreck. I want you to go investigate the shipwreck and see what you can see. Uh, and basically, you, you go on this trek to find this shipwreck. And essentially, you find a bunch of notes and a bunch of dead bodies and you know the shipwreck on the shore and it turns out the same thing happened that had happened in in serene new serene old serene i guess yeah. uh where where the, a monster had been transported and they discovered it was breaking its shackles they turned the 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 ship around but it was too late uh it basically crashed on the shore that thing escaped and and then you fight it and you have to basically take back the captain's log because the concern was this crashed ship was going to look bad on all knots. If a knot captain can't captain a ship and crashes into the shore, you know, maybe knots aren't that great at sailing after all. And so right. you have to be basically say, yeah, it had nothing to do with the captain. He did everything right, but, but this monster escaped and wreaked havoc. And so you, you basically um, maintain the knots legacy of, uh, of competency at the sea. So that was just that next leg. But at the end of that, Vasco and D 
the Sarde both get not tattoos together, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. So do you have a tattoo on your face? Yep. Yeah, by his chin. There you go. That's uh, kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a cool thing because it's it's there for the rest of the game as as just a little mark that you know you and Vasco are close. Okay. Cool. Interesting. I, I this game is surprising me. Yeah. I feel like I need to explore more of it, but I, I kind of want to find out what happens if I don't have any reputation with any of my party members except Ziora. <laughs> so I don't think anyone else is going to die. And probably not, but we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh that's it for us this week. I appreciate everybody listening. Until next time, I'm Drew. And I'm Matt. And we're out of here. You guys have a great week. And we'll be back next week with the continuation of Greedfall. Fall.